Express. 
mighty one We worship you of your mercy and know oh, how your love it always surround lift your voice and say mighty one mighty you 
said, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. To God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Sit awesome in power. Our God, said, our God. And our God. y'all know God is mighty? How many of y'all actually believe that he's mighty? How many of y'all believe he can do anything that he needs to do when he wants to do it and how he wants to do it? Come on, come on, lift your voice. God is mighty. He is mighty today. Hallelujah. So I want to do something. I want you to grab the hand of your neighbor. Grab the hand of your neighbor. I was uh, leaving my house this morning. And the Lord spoke something to me. He says, I want you to pray this morning. And I said, okay, what you want me to pray for? And he said, I want you to pray for Maui and East Palestine. And I said, East Palestine? I said, I know, you know, they have the train wreck. And he said, the world has forgotten those two places, but I have not. And so I want you to know we're going to pray for Maui, we're going to pray for East Palestine, but we're going to pray for you because some of you have been forgotten. Some of you have been left for dead. Some of you have been skipped over. And God said, you tell my people that I do not forget, that I cannot forget, that I am the God who remembers. Come on, let's lift your hands. Father, we love you and we honor you and we thank you, God. Father, what happened, Father, to East Palestine and what happened to Maui? is a travesty but father where evil abounds grace abounds that much more so we pray that the light of the glorious gospel God is going to shine in those two places God because you are the God of memory you are the God that remembers Lord God and father even when the world the arrangement moves on you never move on so, Father, we love you and we honor you. And then I pray today for those that are here that have felt like they're being forgotten, that have felt like they've been passed over, God, that have dreams that are unfulfilled, hopes that have been deterred. I pray right now for your anointing in this house today, God, from start to finish, God, that you are the God who remembers. And just because there are problems, it doesn't mean that you're not there. 
You want us to learn something and come closer to you. And then in an instant, like Joseph, you will deliver us. So we thank you, Father, today that your supernatural presence and provision would flow to those two places. Father, they're suffering in silence. So we release angels right now from the north and south and east and from the west. Father, to bring provision and bring hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ to those places and to your people that are here. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God a hand clap. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, come on. Amen. So good to see you this morning. So shake your neighbor's hand and you can be seated today. Amen. Yeah. All right, we got a lot to cover today. Come on, give God another shout. God is good and his mercy endures forever. Amen. We appreciate you being here today. We want to uh, also, um, as we're welcoming you, we want to welcome you to Abundant Living Family Church, High Desert, where we have passion for God and compassion for people. If this is your first time here, you don't have to say anything, but we do want to see you, and we want to recognize you and honor you for being here today. So if this is your first time, can you throw your hand in the air and let me see you? Let me see you right here. God, God bless you over here. God bless you. Come on, Abundant Living, make some noise. What's up? God bless you right there. Amen. And then we want to welcome our social media audience. I got to give a shout out. I have one of the biggest fans in the whole world, and it's Kendra's mama. Hi, mama. Hi, mama. She said, Carol Burnett used to do this. So every time I do this, mama, I'm saying, what's up? So y'all give my mom, my, I have two moms, well, three actually, give my mom, Carol and Garrett, a big old shout. <laughs> now you're famous, mom. All right. Come on, put your hand over your heart today. You guys look so good today. Are you excited about being in the house of God today? Come on, come on, come on. God is so good, so good today. So this for our visitors, these are the six things that we want to be operating in our church. And so we're working hard to make sure that these things are moving so we can change our community. So put your hand over your heart and let's say it together on the count of three. One, two, three. We are abundant living. And we receive the life of Jesus. Our families, our friends, our community will know about his life. We will experience abundant prayer. We will provide abundant care. We will pursue abundant health. We will increase through abundant wealth. We will love in our abundant families. And we will commit to abundant service. We are abundant nation. And we will know him and make him known. Come on, give him a shout. All right. I'm going to try to move through this today as quick as possible. Um, and I'm so excited. How many of y'all enjoyed last week the mechanics of good and evil? Woo! So I told you this is going to be a head scratcher. And today is going to be a head scratcher. Now, if you are highly educated today, have an additional degree today, don't get mad at me. Okay, I went to college too, but uh, we're gonna, I'm going to give you something that's going to invert your entire thinking today, and we're going to continue on this series of the mechanics of good and evil. Everybody say the mechanics of good and evil. Notice I didn't say good versus evil. Come on, you learned that last week. This is going to be so powerful today. Everybody say no. Everybody say knowledge is not power. Nikki, excuse me, Pastor Mark, I got a degree, and I got my master's, and I'm a doctorate. Okay, let's say it again, in case you didn't hear it the first time. Repeat after me, knowledge is not power. It's just necessary. Are y'all ready today? Woo, get ready to take some notes. All right. Today we're going to be, this is going to be another head scratcher. Just scratch your head like this. Some of you do it already because you got dandruff. It's all right. <laughs> Just scratch your head. This will turn everything we've been taught in school upside down, so you need to get ready today. Are y'all ready? 
And it's going to empower some of you that might not have had the chance to go to school or been afforded the opportunity to go to school. But I'm going to show you today, this is another deception. Last week was the foundation of deception, remember? And we talked about the foundation of deception, biggest deception being played right now, Mark, in our whole entire world. We're going to get real deep into this today, is this notion of good versus evil. And it was hard because we have these words, Mike, and we use these words. We tell our kids, be a good boy. We tell our, our daughter, be a good girl, right? But I told you last week, good is only an adjective and an adverb. Good is not a noun. Wait, excuse me. What do you mean? Because a noun, Kevin, is a person, place, or thing. And we had a scripture last week, and it blows everything away. And Jesus, this man comes up to Jesus. He says, good teacher. He says, stop. He said, why do you call me good? And I told you last week, here's the revelation. He said, he called Jesus a good teacher only because he thought he was good. John, he thought he was good. And so Jesus checked the fire out of him. He said, you think you're all famous? Watch this, Doug. He said, you think you've done all this stuff? The boy said, I've done everything right since I was a kid. He said, so do me a favor now as an adult. If you're so smart, watch this, Pops. If you're so smart, go sell everything and pick up your cross and follow me. The Bible said the man put his head down, walked away because he had great wealth. So Jesus said, you know what? People think they're good, and there's only one who's good, and he's the Father, the Father God. So here's the problem, and we've all been trained incorrectly. We're going to go deeper today. Me and you cannot be good. We cannot be good. Because good, the knowledge of good and evil, the very, the very reason, Austin, you're saying good is because your first daddy, Adam, ate from a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And I'm going to show you something today. He didn't have that knowledge when he was created. And if God didn't give him that knowledge when he was created, he didn't need it. Wait, excuse me, Mike? Mr. Mike, what? He didn't need it. And I'm going to show you today why he didn't need it. Because he had revelation. And we've been tricked. Knowledge is not power. Revelation is. Wait, 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 wait. You mean I got all these degrees for nothing? No. Because in the world, in the cosmos, in the arrangement, and you need knowledge. I'm just telling you, it ain't power. Are y'all ready? So here we go. The earth's original structure, say original structure. Now this is, this is a head scratcher. The earth's original structure was arranged for life. The tree of life, Mr. Loris, and then there was a tree they're not supposed to touch, they're not supposed to eat, the tree of the knowledge, come on, of good and evil, not good versus evil, because they're the same. They're the same. Batman got more problems than Joker. But he's the good one. The earth structure, when God put it together, Kelly, without interference, was arranged and structured for life. Adam and Eve were never supposed to die. Then Adam gave authority to the devil, watch, to rearrange the world for death. You got to hear me. God arranged the world, structured it, Pastor Dora had the tree of life. They were supposed to eat of it. And anytime they ate of that tree, Zoe, the word Hebrew in life is Zoe. Anytime anything happened, it would repair them. It would restore them. It means more than not die. It means restoration. And anytime they ate of that tree, eternal life would flow through them and they would never die. Adam hands over the authority to the devil. The devil now rearranges the whole entire structure. And that's what today is about. And he moves them from the tree of life to the tree of knowledge of good and evil, Adam ingested it, and when he ingested it, it went into the cells and the DNA of the human race, and now thousands and thousands of generations later, you and I have in our DNA this deception of good versus evil, and we have this knowledge we were never created to possess. So now the arrangement, the world system, promotes death. 
Abortion promotes death. Rearranging the family promotes death. Look at all the policies right now. More people are dying. Is anybody going to talk to me? And you have people voting for these types of things. And now death is flowing. People are pushing over seniors. I just saw yesterday this girl, uh, for no reason, ran up behind a music teacher in New York and just pushed her from the back. She fell down, split her head open, and now she died five days later. They just gave her eight and a half years. She's sitting there crying. Why did you push her over in the first place? People are pushing people in front of trains. What is the point of that? Mass mobs running in stores, taking stuff that don't belong to them because somebody sold them that they're victims, not victorious. So the world system is arranged to promote, Kevin, death. And we just consume it. And you know why we don't fight against it? Because death is running through our veins. Because death is the penalty of sin. And we like to sin. We don't like holiness. We don't like purity. We don't like God's instruction. We want to go grab something else. Just like Adam and Eve grabbed something else. So now the world is arranged for death. So Jesus comes to rearrange the rearrangement. Oh, come on. From death back to life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father, Priscilla, except they come through me, and me is life. So guess what? You don't need to be good-driven, driven. You need to be God-driven. And if you're God-driven, then you're life-driven. You and I got to be life-driven, not good-driven. We can't be good. We can't be trying to do what the world wants. We've got to be life-driven, which means everything that comes from our mouth, everything that comes out of us has got to bring people to eternal life. Life. life driven we have to be life driven now here we go the arrangement highlights knowledge here it is my watch the arrangement from the devil highlights knowledge over revelation what day the system tells us have a high IQ but it should be teaching us have a high EQ. So you've never heard of EQ because your school don't want you to have EQ, Karen. They want us to have IQ. Because the more IQ, the higher your knowledge. And the higher your knowledge, the more you're promoted in the world system because it's arranged to promote you based on knowledge. But EQ is emotional quotient. It's called emotional intelligence. And it's your ability on the inside to push back stuff from the outside and to stay stable and within your created purpose. EQ is much... You you know some people that are smart as I don't know what but dumb as a box of rocks ain't got no common sense common sense is only common to the person who got sense you should write that down now here we go this is crazy watch this Kev this is why some of the most knowledgeable humans on earth are in hell but what, what did I say? The most knowledgeable, highest IQ are burning in hell. So that teaches us something, Miss Judy. If knowledge was power, why are you burning? You want me to prove it, Lonnie? This is a fact. Atheists are people who don't believe in God, Alex. Agnostics are people who believe you can't know if there's a God or not. Watch this, Brandy. Did you know that atheists have an IQ six points higher than people who believe in God? This is an actual study. So watch, Brooke. Good to see you. Watch. IQ six points higher than a Christian? And then the world uses that, Raquel, and they say, see, that's what we told you. You Christians are dumb. You Christians are foolish. You're talking about a Jesus. You're talking about a Noah. You're talking about an ark. You're talking about lions. You're talking about people in the lion's den. Y'all believe a bunch of fables. Y'all believe a bunch of stuff that's fictional. It don't even make sense. And we have an IQ that is six points higher. So tell me what your IQ does 
when you're in a place for eternity with no air condition. Smart your way out of that. Come on, think your way out of hell. Come on. Now, you ready? Watch, Alicia. Here we go. Sigmund Freud. Did y'all know he was an atheist? You know all these names. Watch. But you don't know as many preachers. And the ones you do know are off. Sigmund Freud, what is he the father of? Psychology. Straight, stone cold, Ashanti, atheist. Y'all know Stephen Hawking? He just died. The one in the, in the wheelchair that was talking, look weird. He don't look weird because he's in a wheelchair. He look weird because he don't know about God. Miss Sylvia, he blowing his little thing. Supposed to be so brilliant. Did y'all know Thomas Edison was an atheist? Had the creativity to create electricity. Well, not really, but I'm going to leave that alone. He had, a, he had an assistant who was... Why am I slapping my black hand? I don't know. Anyways, I did, look, don't get mad at me because of history. Thomas Edison helped with electricity. We're going to say help. <laughs> help with electricity. How many of y'all knew Albert Einstein? Father of relativity. Straight up atheist. Did not believe in God. God empowered these people with a supernatural ability to think. And they have the nerve to think, Evan, they don't need Jesus. Karl Marx. Now everybody going to get mad at me. Karl Marx. Atheist. Marxism. Now watch it. Now all the black people are going to send me emails. I just got the white people a second ago. Now you're going to black people. Hispanic people, you safe today. The founders of the BLM movement, Black Lives Matter, straight up Marxists. Now, people left this church. Pastor Mark, I just don't like how you talk. You black. You ought to represent. You white boy. Shut up. I'm not following nobody's nothing. Now, 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 black lives do matter. But so does everybody else's life. And injustice is injustice no matter who's doing it or who's receiving it. We got to stay together as one. We've got to be united as one. And this skin color ain't got nothing to do with what's on the inside. You need a transplant. You don't say, what color is it coming from? You say, give me a kidney. Give me a heart. So... The founders of the Marxist movement, Black Lives Matter is a statement. The movement I got a problem with. Marxists, straight up, straight up atheists. Now can't nobody find them and they got two, three mansions and millions of dollars is gone. And you didn't put a dollar in a black community. Now you go do your research. Michael Brown, hands up, don't shoot. Go back to the community now. They'll tell you they didn't get a dime and they used his death. Oh, you don't got to look at me like that. I'm talking about this knowledge that's messing me and you up. Karl Marx. Alan Turning. Do y'all even know who he is? You don't know who he is and you use something from him every day. He is the father of computer science and AI invented the concept, Nikki, of computers. Straight up atheist. Now look at what AI is doing. Bringing the Antichrist in here like it ain't no problem. Just because you have knowledge doesn't mean that you are going to heaven. And I'm going to say this. A certain amount of knowledge without God, the creator who gave it to you, is a death sentence for hell because you think... What you know is more important than what's been revealed. Watch, I'm, a, a, I'm all one today. Watch. Watch, Troy. I'm a, watch this. And you probably never thought about this like this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch. He saith unto them, he is Jesus. But whom say ye that I am? 
Jesus is doing some things, and everybody's kind of arguing, and so the people are trying to figure out who Jesus is. They, they have no idea who Jesus is. So they start all these conversations, and they start talking, Pastor Dora, and they say, some say he's Jeremiah, some say he's Elijah, and then they got, they got fancy, Brian, and said, some say he's John the Baptist. And Jesus said, yeah, 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 y'all been with me all this time, who do you say that I am? So he starts talking. Now listen to me. This is good, Leo. He's talking to 12 people. Everybody say 12. He's talking to the 12 disciples, Minister George, but only one of them can give him an answer. All 12 have knowledge, but only one got revelation. Ah, what? Ah, watch this. He says, so who do you say I am since you've been around me? And Simon Peter, remember the crazy one, violent, cutting people's ear off? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ. Please listen to me. The list that I just gave you, don't believe, Carmen, that God, that Jesus is the Christ. They don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and they don't believe that Jesus exists. So all your knowledge, Mr. George, means nothing if you don't know that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's why, Michaela, they're in hell. Peter answers and says, you are thou, thou art the Christ. Watch this. The son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for, for school, I'm sorry, for college, I'm sorry, for your parents, for flesh and blood, humans, hath not, what? Revealed. Revealed is the Greek word, apo, is two words, apo and kalupto. Apo, 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 or kalupto, and when you put them together, here's what they mean. To take off the cover, which means something was covered. If something is covered, if you take it off a cover, it had to be covered or hidden in the first place. Apokalupto means to take the cover off or to disclose. So Jesus says, flesh and blood, humans, have not taken the cover off of who I am. Flesh and blood have not disclosed who I really am. You think I'm a carpenter. You think I'm a prophet. That's why you think I'm Jeremiah or John the Baptist or Elijah. I am not John the Baptist. I am not Jeremiah. I am not a prophet, and I am the Christ. I am the son of the living God, but I didn't tell nobody that yet. My Father who is in heaven, not here, our Father which art in heaven, has taken off the cover and disclosed it to one of the twelve. Ugh! Flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is what? In heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. Change his name from Simon Barjona. Watch this, John, to Peter. And upon this rock... I will build my church. Now, this has been mispreached for ages, so we're going to clean it up today. And upon this rock, Austin, I will build my church. And the what? Gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to break this off because this has been mispreached. And whatsoever thou shalt what? Bind on earth shall be bound in. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be what? Loosed in heaven. Now, watch this. Watch this. This is big. People preach, and the Catholics believe, that's why they call him St. Peter, and he's even been renamed the first pope. Come on, stay with me now. If you Catholic or used to be Catholic, you'd be all right. They believe that Peter is the first bishop or the first pope. And if you talk to them, Malachi, and ask them, why y'all believe that? They go to this scripture. They say, oh, upon Peter, that uh, God, Jesus, is going to build his church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Okay, stop. L number one. Hell is a spiritual place, not a natural one. Hell has gates. So if hell's a spiritual place, then the gates are spiritual. If the gates are spiritual, then we cannot be talking about a natural thing. Peter's natural. So Peter cannot be the foundation of Jesus building the church. Jesus is the foundation of the church. But here's the... Here's even the bigger revelation of the foundation of the church. 
Because this foundation has to be spiritual because it's going against a spiritual place. The spiritual place, Paula, is the gates of hell. Why, are you ready? Ready, Carnegie? Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. And the gates of hell won't prevail against it. They won't prevail against the revelation. The apocalypto. Jesus didn't say, I'm going to build a church on you, Peter. You finna go cut somebody's ear off. Boy, sit down. You violent. Sit down. The, the church is built on the revelation that Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the son of the living God. It's not built on a human person. The Catholic church is built on Mary. I'm sorry, but I'm going to tell the truth. Mary was a servant and a vessel just like everyone else. Was she special? Yeah, because she carried the Lord Jesus. But don't worship her. Because last time I checked, she died, had a funeral, and didn't get up. You hear me? The revelation, not the knowledge. The knowledge that came to Peter wasn't knowledge. Because knowledge comes from people. Revelation comes from God. And knowledge is not power. Revelation, apocalypto, is power, Miss Sylvia. And the number one power is that you know that Jesus is the Christ. So you can be saved, Dad. Watch this, Dad Archery. So we can be saved. And what? And what? And what? So we can be saved, right? So we can go to heaven. Right? So we can help save others. You can't help save others if you're not saved, Corky. So the only way to be saved is that you call on the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, Evan. The name of the Lord is Jesus. So if I call on the name of Jesus, then I can be saved. Then I can perpetrate the kingdom to other people. Jesus, I'm going to build the church on the revelation that I am the Christ, that I am the son of the living God. And whatever hell throws out of its gates, it'll bounce off if you know that I'm the Christ. Because the devil ain't scared of you, and he ain't scared of your knowledge, and he ain't scared of your light bulb. And he... He ain't scared of your computer. He ain't scared of your psychology. He ain't scared of your college degree. He ain't scared of your master's degree. He ain't scared of your PhD. He ain't scared of nobody until I step in front of you and he knows he's dealing with the Christ. He knows he's dealing with the son of the living God because he threw everything at me and I got back up. So the devil only responds to the power in the name of Jesus, not a degree on a wall. Ready for this? So are we good? Are we good? Peter's not what the church was built on. The revelation of who Jesus was. Number two, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. We can bind and loose, and we think binding and loosing are the keys to the kingdom, and it's been preached for thousands of years. Binding and loosing are the execution of the keys. Do you know the key ain't as important as the door I'm walking through? Do you know I can walk around jingling some keys and ain't got nowhere to go? Do you know people that don't have a home have keys? The key ain't the thing. Y'all, are y'all ready today? The key's not the issue. The keys to the kingdom are not binding and loosing. The keys to the kingdom are the, your ability to receive revelation from the Father. The keys are your ability to receive revelation, but your knowledge can get in the way. That's why we're not obedient. When the Father reveals to you, you can forbid what heaven has already forbidden. You can bind and loose what heaven has already bound or loose. Listen, here's what people miss. Are y'all ready? You've been Christian a long time. Listen to this. You can't bind and you can't loose unless you have orders and instructions from heaven. If, you, if your orders and instructions keep you are from heaven, watch this. Then it has to be revealed to you by someone who is in heaven. Humans are not in heaven. So humans can only communicate knowledge that they got from their daddy the devil. 
Revelation is what you get from your father who lives in heaven. And he says, I need you to bind this because I already did. Ah, I need you to loose this because I already did. And the key is revelation. It is not knowledge because knowledge is not power. Prove it. How did a fisherman turn the world upside down? Y'all not listening to me. How did a fisherman, Peter, turn the world upside down? How did he do it? Because he wasn't educated in the arrangement. He just a fisherman. God said, yeah, that's why I picked him. Y'all want to talk to me today? Come on, this heavy today. Paul went through more suffering than Peter. Do you know why? He was more educated. Oh, y'all didn't get it. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. Paul said, I was shipwrecked. Paul said, I've been bitten by snakes. Paul said, I've been beat 39 stripes times one, four times. Why did Paul, Evan, why did Paul suffer more than Peter? Because the pain had to pull that education out of that smart brain. Peter didn't go through as much as Paul because he was a fisherman who received revelation and moved. You can do more with revelation than five degrees. Are y'all getting this? We're almost done. Watch. 2 Corinthians 4.4. Oh, this is good stuff today. Jesus, thank you. Whose mind? Say mind. mind. Okay, now first of all, what, what's in your mind? Your brain, which is the tool that your mind uses. Your brain is the hardware. Your mind is actually the software that runs through your brain. Right? The brain is a mechanical tool, mama. Watch. Whose minds? Where is knowledge? In the mind. Priscilla, you ready? And I know you smart because you a nurse, but that's okay. <laughs> Any knowledge you get, it never goes to your spirit. Oh, come on, Renee. This is so big. Your spirit will reject knowledge because it only functions on communion, intuition, and conscience. Your spirit only responds to heaven. Prove it, Pastor Mark. All the knowledge you got before you gave your life to the Christ, the Son of the living God, never turned your spirit on because it was off. Some of y'all got saved way later. How come, you didn't, how come you didn't know? So you had a God awareness but not a God conscious. Come on now. How come you didn't know? Submit yourself to the Lord. Because knowledge don't turn on the thing that submits. Y'all, knowledge don't turn your spirit on. Jesus do. You knew a whole lot, but you didn't know the one thing that matters when you take your last breath. Listen to this. Whose minds, the God of this world, whose minds where knowledge is, revelation comes through your spirit into your brain. Then your brain processes your obedience. Whose minds? The God of this world. Who is the God of this world? Satan. The word world in this is aion, A-I-O-N in the Greek, Sonia. And A-I-O-N actually means age. It means time and space in this one. It don't mean cosmos arrangement. It's two different Greek words for one English word, word world. All right? The God of this world the God of this aeon, the God of this age, Pastor Dora, has what? Has blinded who do not believe. The mind has been blinded, y'all. The mind, your thinking apparatus, cannot see. All the knowledge in the world, Latoya, doesn't cure your blindness. Albert Einstein was blind. Sigmund Freud was blind. Stephen Hawkins was blind. Alan Turing was blind. 
So because they were blind, they couldn't see their way to heaven. Because Jesus is the way. And what they were blinded from was the way to heaven. And the, the way to heaven is not a road, it's a person. So the devil said, I will blind your apparatus, Bubba, to be able to think and see and process the revelation that God is trying to give to your spirit. So the devil says, I don't care if God reveals himself to you in your spirit. I'm going to blind your mind so you can't take advantage of it. That's the mechanics of good and evil. Are y'all learning something? So why does he blind it? It says who, those who don't believe. What's the definition of those who don't believe? Atheist, agnostic. Watch, watch. Lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, the fact, the revelation that he's the son of the living God, who is the image of God, should shine on them. The devil says, I'm going to blind your brain. I'm going to blind the hardware and the software. Your spirit is what's important, but I'm going to blind the thing in the middle so you can't carry out what's been revealed to you, and then I'm going to trap you in a world of knowledge. You're going to seek degrees, and you're going to seek promotions, and you're going to seek running your business, and you're going to seek success. You're going to seek an idol, you American. You're going to seek, you're going to, seek to be at the top of AGT, America's Got Talent. You're going to seek to be famous. You're going to seek to be Facebook famous. You're going to seek to be an influencer. You're going to seek to be on social media. You seek to be a millionaire. You're going to seek to be a rapper. You're going to seek to be a singer. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna seek to be an actor because all those things in my arrangement, says the devil, I will reward. But your knowledge stops at your last breath. The only thing that carries you past your last breath is revelation. Because when you stop breathing, if you don't know that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, you don't get to move in with him. How many of y'all let people live with you that you don't know and don't trust? One crazy person on crack, raise their hand. That's why when you wake up, you ain't going to have no VCR. I don't know what a VCR is. <laughs> the phrase God of this world or God of this age indicates that Satan is the major influence. Watch this. Watch this, Kev. He's the major influence on ideas. He's the major influence on opinions inside the what? Arrangement. Watch. Goals, hopes, views of the majority of people. The Bible says hell is wide. The gates of hell are why the gates of hell are broad, but guess what? Heaven is narrow. Because not that many. You want me to tell this, Mark? Heaven has measurements. Read the book of Revelations. Do you know why? This is big. You know why heaven has measurements? Because they know it ain't going to be overcrowded. Do you know what else the Bible say? Hell is expanding every day. Hell has. No measurements because it's full and fuller. Because people got their smarticles turned on. And that's because the majority of people have seek knowledge, not revelation. His influence, the devil, also encompasses the world's philosophies, the world's education, and the world's commerce, finances. The thoughts, ideas, speculations, and false religions of the world are under his control because Adam gave it to him and have sprung from his lies and his deception and the biggest lie and the biggest deception is good and evil versus good versus evil. It is not good versus evil because they sit in the same fruit from the same tree, and the minute that knowledge got downloaded, we see all the problems. First thing you see is they get kicked out. They become homeless. Mm. They become housing insecure. Nikki, county term, housing insecure. Because God said, I don't want you to be in there unless you stretch out your hand and eat from the tree of life and stay in this state separated from me. I'm preaching some Bible today. So he kicked him out. And then they son killed his brother. That's what knowledge of good and evil gets you. 
a choice you can't make. All these come from the tree. The battle is that the good slash evil of each of these concepts, ideas, commerce, is indistinguishable to the non-Christian. Are y'all listening? So because it's indistinguishable to the atheist, the atheist grabs the knowledge which is distinguishable, but because he don't have or she don't have revelation, they push back the revelation and call us foolish and they call us silly. I'm going to read the scripture in a minute. We're almost done. Because they hide behind their knowledge. Stephen Hawking, Thomas Edison, uh, Tyson, what's his name? Tyson Degrassi, Degrassi Tyson. What's that boy's name? That black dude? Neil, De, Neil Tyson Degrassi. Idiot. They hide behind knowledge in the side of the arrangement. Have y'all noticed? The experts are the ones with the most knowledge, not the most holiness. Elizabeth. The young people are like, who's Elizabeth? Watch Sarah from the Sun on one of them old channels. You'll be all right. I can't stand these young people. They ain't got no history in them. <laughs> Mike, come here. Frank, come here. Ann Bowman, come here. Beth, come here. Y'all give him a hand clap. That was kind of complicated what I just said. So let me show you. Mike, I got that shirt. What you doing? I think I had it first. No, you didn't have that shirt first. <laughs> Follow me around at the Victorville Mall. <laughs> I got a shirt just like that, dude. <laughs> you hold this. Leave it like that. Miss Ann, you hold this. Y'all give me a hand clap. Okay. Watch. 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 Turn yours around, Frank. You got to see something, so watch. You have to hear me. Then we're done. Watch. Read this. Kingdom of God, another word for it is God's way of doing things. God arranged the Garden of Eden and the system around the way he does things. America is a colony of heaven. Y'all don't even want me to get to this because this is too deep, especially for black people. You don't want me to get to this. <sighs> I love Black Panther, right? I about had a heart attack when, uh, 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 what's his name? Chad ba Boswick, Basley, what's his name? Whatever. When Chad died. Remember, remember uh, 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 Jason, I was out here. We was doing an event in the parking lot. I heard about it on the way here. I was out crying on the microphone. Ah, Black Panther dead. We get, you know what I don't like about the system? We get one black superhero, now he dead. Why, what happened to Superman? Why don't he die? Why don't Aquaman die? Why don't Batman die? Why don't Flash die? We get one black superhero, he dead. That ain't right. Why'd I say that? I'm off track. <laughs> so, the kid, so the kid, <laughs> I'm so racist today. I'm just racist today. So, so, so the kingdom of God is God's way of doing things. So watch. Here's why I said all that. I'll be saying funny stuff, but I mean something. So inside of, inside of Black Panther, they would, they would call white people colonizers. Right? And I understand the whole concept, but just follow me through. The reason the devil is attacking this whole colonization process, right? Colonization is not wrong. People are wrong on how they use it. Now watch, I'm going to take you somewhere. Watch this again. So they called them colonizers, so everybody black started running around talking about colonizers, and it was another way to pit black and white people against each other. When everybody ran around protesting, ain't never been colonized. You're from Pomona. Shut up. <laughs> so they wanted the negative term, evil, on colonization. The devil is smarter. And he knows that earth was a colony of heaven. And if you don't like colonization, you will reject the concept of the kingdom of God coming to earth. <laughs> Woo! -hoo! It's a fire. Because you don't discern between words. You just use them. The devil don't want you knowing that earth is a colony and you are from that kingdom, not this one. So Adam hands it over to the devil's rearrangement. Now you watch. This is, it. This is good. Now watch. 
So if the kingdom of God, it was God's arrangement, and the devil from Adam rearranged it, then we have to ask ourselves, what is the currency of each arrangement? Do you know you need currency to do business? Now are you ready? Oh. The currency of the kingdom, how you do business in the kingdom. Apocalypto. Are y'all ready? How you do business in the devil's arrangement. It's easier when you see it. You trying to do business with Anne when you were created to do business with Beth. If you do business with Anne, you will be highly rewarded oh, by him. If you do business with Beth through your communion, your time with God, being in the word of God, which goes against most human knowledge. It's not human knowledge to forgive people 70 times 7. That don't make sense. No, it's not knowledge. Darlene is revelation. If you use the currency of revelation, are you ready for this? I'm on one today. You get to have blessing inside of the rearrangement. But Nikki, the blessing comes from him, the father of lights, in whom there's no shadow of turning. So you can still, Alicia, be blessed in the rearrangement. You just have to reject this over this. Does that make sense? Come on, give them a hand clap. Y'all can be seated. Did I tell you it's a head scratcher? Are y'all going to be all right in this series? Because I'm just getting started. Well, I'm not playing out here. We need to spend time with God. Last one. For because by the purpose of God, the what? World in the Greek is what? Cosmos. Cosmos means what? Now, you ain't going to believe this. Watch this one. Cosmos means orderly arrangement. I, Tracy, I can't believe this word. When I looked up, I knew cosmos means world, and I know world means arrangement. But I kept digging, and what I didn't know was the word world in the ancient times literally means this, carried off in harm. Wait, stop, stop. You know how we always say world system? World literally means, listen, carried off in harm. When one nation would attack another nation and they would enslave that nation and they would carry them off, you know what they would say to them? You're being carried off to our world. Forget your world. Now you are a slave to our world. Because we are carrying you off in harm. When the devil rearranged God's system, guess what he did? Carried us off in harm. And the world, with all its wisdom, had not the knowledge, which was revelation of God. It was God's pleasure, watch this, by so foolish a thing, this is foolish, as preaching. Pastor Mark's being foolish right now to give salvation to those who have faith in him. Preaching is foolish. To Albert Einstein, Stephen Hawking, Alan Turing, Karl Marx, it's all foolish. But can I tell you something? I'd rather be a fool for God 
and not have to have a meeting in eternity with Stephen Hawking. And go to heaven and be with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that was revealed to me that he was the Christ, that he was the son of the living God. So what's the point, Pastor Mark? When Adam was in perfect communion with God, every day he had unhindered revelation. He had unhindered disclosure day. He had unhindered information from heaven. So he didn't need no knowledge of no good and evil. He didn't choose wrong until they got the knowledge from the rearrangement. Come on, give God a shout. Come on, give God a shout today. Come on, lift your hands. Hmm. Am I rejecting your knowledge? No. I'm rejecting it as a priority. Look at me for a second. Adam named every animal, every animal, without that knowledge from that tree. You hear that, Kevin? He named every animal, and God said, cool, whatever you name it, that's what his name is. Do you know how come he knew an elephant was an elephant? Because the Heavenly Father was revealing through his spirit it was an elephant, buddy. And he said, oh, you got that one right. Oh, snake. Oh, hamster. Oh, gopher. Oh, cat. Oh, dog. And because it was revealed to him before he said it, God says, me and you are in connection. The disconnection happened when he got some more knowledge. Come on, lift your hand. I need you to seek revelation and no longer knowledge. The knowledge is necessary because we do live in the arrangement. So don't tell your parents you ain't got to do your homework. <laughs> You're going to get a revelation of a butt whooping. <laughs> well, not now, CPS. You don't get your butt whooped no more, right? Meemaw don't know nothing about no CPS. <laughs> Meemaw says, CPS mean call the police soon because I'm going to kill you. Father, we love you today and we honor you and we just, we thank you so much for what you're revealing through your word. God, we are not going to be deceived by the knowledge of good and evil. We're going to get revelation and the only way to get revelation is to be in our word daily. We only need to hear from you. And after we hear from you, Eldia, you're the God of knowledge because your knowledge is not contaminated. Your knowledge contains life. And if we have life, we're life driven. If we have knowledge, we're good driven. So today we reject it as a priority. But Father, we'll go to college. We'll get our degrees. But when we get our degree and we learn something from men, help us to run it past you and make sure where it comes from. Because everybody talking ain't you. Every voice I hear ain't you. So let me get my information from the Word of God, who is Jesus. Father, I pray today a spirit of repentance would hit us in this church. If you know in this day that you have sought knowledge over revelation, that's why you spend more time on Facebook and the internet than in your word, stand to your feet. Because some of you are waking up and getting on social media, getting on the internet first before you get in the word of God. Somebody talk to me today. Some of you have been seeking knowledge your whole life and you've been promoted. But today you need to reject the seeking. And you need to seek him. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of heaven. And I'll add all the knowledge. Come on. Seek me first. Seek my communion. Oh, there should be more of y'all standing up. Because some of y'all value what you know over who you know. It's who you know, not what you know. The arrangement told you it's, it's who you know. It's who you know. Yeah, but that who better be Jesus. Come on, lift your hands. If you're here today and you're a sinner, well, Pastor Mark, I'm not no sinner. I'm good. That's why you should stand up. You little nasty. A sinner is a person who missed the mark of God and doesn't inherit the prize. The prize, Miss Rosemary, is eternal life. The scriptures say eternal life is knowing God the Father and Jesus his Son. Eternal life is not just a time and a space. Eternal life is a relationship. 
And you must know God like Peter said. And you must know Jesus. And you must be born again. If you're here today and you've been seeking knowledge and you've been doing your own thing and you've never repented. Repent means to turn the opposite of what you've been doing. If that is you today, you need to stand to your feet because you will die and go to hell. And then you will be cast into the lake of fire with this weeping and gnashing of teeth. Revelation 20 verse 10. And you will be with the beast and the false prophet. You will not be with Jesus and his father. You must be born again. And to be born again, you must accept that Jesus died and paid for your sins. Jesus is the pardon for your sin. But you must stand up and say, I am guilty of breaking every single one of God's laws. I lie. I cheat. I fornicate. I commit adultery. I don't honor my mother and father. I take the name of God in vain. I don't rest. I covet what my neighbor has. You're a lawbreaker. And only a lawbreaker can be pardoned by the Lord Jesus Christ. Last chance. Stand to your feet if you need God, if you're hungry for God, if you realize that this thing is not working in the way that you're working. It. Now lift your hands. Jesus said, come to me, all ye that are heavy laden, and what I will do is give you rest. Rest means salvation. God says, I will save you from your sins by believing on my son Jesus. If you believe that Jesus died Todd, in our place, then the transaction takes place, and God takes your sin, puts it on Jesus, and you don't die in your sin, the Bible says. Repeat after me, dear Jesus, I receive the gift of salvation. I am a sinner. I seek the wrong things, but today my mind is getting clear to know that today is the day of salvation. Father, we love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, today I'm forgiven. Amen. Come on, give God a shout. I only need one. Come on, give him a bigger one. Come on, you all right today? You all right? Repeat after me, knowledge is not power. It's just necessary. Oh, give him another one. Come on. What I tell you last week, this series straight fire from heaven. And we're going to undo everything the devil has done. If you stood up today, I want you to text the word journey to 760-706-7562. And for seven weeks, you're going to get emails and texts to supply and support the decision that you just made. Now, the best thing you can do, you can go on your phone. Don't worry about it. Is get in your word starting tomorrow. Get in your word for yourself. Start with the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And if they're too complicated, start with Psalms and Proverbs. Start feeding yourself with life, not just good knowledge. Come on, give them a shout. Come on up, babe. All right, all right, all right. So we got something special today, so give me, give me just a minute today. Are y'all excited you're at church today? I hope so. I hope so. All right, we're getting ready to receive our tithes and offerings. So come on, give Jesus a shout. It's your time to give. Oh, come on. You better get out of this Bidenomics and get in the kingdomnomics. Gas is $12 a gallon. I need counseling every time I go past Shell. I start getting traumatized. But guess what? Guess what? This, this economy ain't got nothing to do with you. Ah, this economy ain't got nothing to do with you. Switch economies. The Bible says, watch, he who supplies seed to the sower, no matter the economy, and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying, watch, the needs of the saints, but it's also overflowing in many thanksgiving to God. You know what that means in 2 Corinthians chapter 9? That God will give seed to the sower, and he don't care the economy. He don't care who's president. He don't care about Congress shutting down. I, I wish half of them would shut down. Start taking their pay, see if they start agreeing quicker. Come on now. Oh, the postal workers won't get paid, but we're going to get paid because we're bobbleheads. It's the arrangement. You sow and do tithes and offerings, God will lift you out of these economic situations, and God will give you revelation on what to do, how to do it, so you're okay. Come on, isn't that good stuff? Come on, lift your hand. 
Father, I pray over right now the seed that they are playing, uh, that they are sowing, God, the seed for the sower. And I thank you that we are not involved in Bidenomics. We are not involved in economics of this system. We are involved with the system of the kingdom of God. And that system says I am more than a conqueror, and you will open up the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing that I don't have enough room to receive it. And as much as gas goes up, so will my income. So will my clients. So will my accounts. Come on, somebody. I thank you that this seed rebukes the devourer and pushes the devil back. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, y'all can receive the tithes and offerings. Amen. All right, let's do our announcements real quick, and then we are going to do an ordination. We are ordaining a deacon today. Come on, give God a shout. Give God a shout today. So don't forget, real quick, Sunday school is at 1145 today. We're going to be a little late, maybe. I don't know. It's in the family life building. You want to go deeper in the word of God? Make sure you go to Sunday school, 1145. Next. I hate it too, Ann. <laughs> New members orientation, November the 5th, directly after second service. It's only an hour because when you come to join the church, you be hungry and I be hungrier. So it's only an hour. But how many of you know when you go to work, you got to get an orientation? So if you want to join this wonderful family, how many of y'all know this is a wonderful family? I know abundant nation is off the chain. How many of y'all know abundant nation is transforming ha, the whole entire world? So you want to be a part of this family. November the 5th, right after second service for one hour. Next. Next. Oh, end is ending this Wednesday. Woo! Last Wednesday was the Antichrist and AI, and I left here with some hair. Please come out in person, 7 o'clock. We're studying end times. We're studying prophecy. And we're work looking at current events and the Bible. This Wednesday is called Convergence. And you got to get ready. Listen, the end of the world is not happening because some preacher says it's happening. It's happening because of convergence. Everything Jesus said is coming together. And I'm going to show you what those things are on Wednesday. Amen? Oh, it's coming. Next, last one. Huh? That's all you got? That's all you got, Brooke? That's all you got? All right, we have, where, where's the prayer? You, you didn't do the prayer one? Where? Oh, there you go. In-person prayer. Here's what we're doing. How many of y'all know October's evil? No offense, Kendra, it's your birthday. Uh, no offense. But I don't even like it. Starting today, every Halloween thing coming up, every devil worshiping thing coming up, Disney Channel already demonic, and then they're going to have every demonic thing except for Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus is not demonic. That's my favorite one. But anyways. Hello, hello. The okay, so can I? Can, can I, you do can it? I, you, Since you are yeah. the prayer queen no. warrior. But see, the Lord laid on my heart last week. Um, they always claim October is the month of the enemy. October is the I'm dark hot. month, the high season of I'm the hot. devil. And I said, no, October belongs to the Lord. And we yeah. are to be standing in the gap and praying and interceding and, and overshadowing the darkness that's coming or trying to come that will not prevail. So what we're going to be doing on these Wednesdays, we're going to do it through the month of October now, the first yeah. Wednesday is going to be the in-person Bible study, but the 11th will start our intercessory prayer. We're going to come out. We're going to pray for one hour from 7 to 8 o'clock. I'm asking that you fast until dinner. If you can fast longer, fast. But I know some people that's new to them. Uh, but to fast that day, because it's time for us to break the devil's back. It's time for us to start calling down and pulling down strongholds over the enemy's kingdom. And for us to stop sitting by watching things happen, being reactive. It's time for us to be proactive. Amen. So we're going to come out on these Wednesday nights. And we're going to take authority over the devil's kingdom in the name of Jesus. You know, and pray protection over our children. You know, this is their high time for sacrifice. We need to pray. Quit, quit keeping your eyes closed and your head in the sand to what's happening. Just because it's not affected you doesn't mean we should not be standing in the gap. So we have to begin to pray and continue Come to on. tear down these strongholds. So on the 11th, the 18th, the 25th, we'll be having intercessory prayer here. In and children's you know, church. Oh, in Children's Church, they got over in Children's Church. And don't say, oh, well, you know, I don't pray. No, everyone is called to pray. 
everyone is called to pray. So come out, support, let's wreak havoc on the enemy's kingdom. Come on. And take territory Amen. for Christ. Well, that was a better way to yeah, say it. Yeah, because you, see, this I ain't, off here's track. what I'm going to say. This ain't a playing time. It's I time out for prank. It's I'm time out. I'm sorry. I repent. <laughs> No, it's time out for playing. We can, we can make light of things. It's time yeah. out to make from making light of things. Real things are happening. And it's time for us to get real and go to battle. So you going to bombard heaven on those days? We're bombarding heaven on those days. All right. Come on, give God a shout. Come on up here, Michael Edgar. Michael Edgar, your family. Come on, Lonnie. Come on. Come on, y'all give him a hand clap. Come on. God is good and his mercy endures forever. Social media, stay tuned. Stay with us. Stay with us. How many of y'all know you can't survive in the church without service? You can't survive in the church without servanthood. And Mike has been with us a long time, him and Lonnie. And so this is going to be an ordination service for Deacon Michael Edgar. Long, long time coming. So, step to the side a little bit, Lonnie, for me. I'm sorry. John 13, 12 says, So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you. I want you to take your shoes off. I want you to take your socks off. I am going to wash your feet. And Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. And Peter said, no, don't wash my feet. And Jesus said, if you don't let me wash your feet, then you have no part in us. If you wouldn't have let me wash your feet today, because sometimes men don't want other men touching their feet, <laughs> then I would tell you, you have no part in this ministry. Because guess what? As I wash your feet, I'm commissioning you to wash theirs. Amen. Never be too high to get down and wash the feet of those God has called. It is my honor and my privilege today to humbly wash the feet of a servant of the living God and ordain and anoint you as a deacon of Abundant Living Family Church High Desert where we have passion for God and we have passion for people. Father, I pray that these feet are going to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ, Father, over all of the earth. Every place his feet tread, every place his feet tread, Father, you will bring the gospel and the light of the glorious gospel. Father, as a deacon, he is a serving God. That means sometimes first here and last to leave. But I thank you, God, he has proven even by his job, God, working on the bus that's picking up prisoners, God. He never comes into work uh, angry or sad. He always comes in excited to go to the jail and to minister. So, Father, today, I wash the feet of your servant, Michael Edgar. And today, you are officially anointed, appointed, and ordained as a deacon of abundant living family church high desert in Jesus name amen come on y'all can do better than that go to the next one I give this charge to you I give this charge to you there will be times when God's call will require you to go through very difficult times, Mike. The Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 10. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in your body. That says that just because you're a deacon doesn't mean you won't go through struggles, but you do not stop. You do not quit unless you are otherwise directed by God, because that's what this life is called to. When persecutions or tribulations come, you must always remember that God will never lead you where his grace can't keep you. 
the ministry of servanthood that God has placed in your hands will require that you live a life that is holy and separate unto him. Today, you will be making a commitment. You too, Lonnie, because we're ordaining you as well with him. You'll be making a commitment before God and man to do just that. Do you make that commitment today? Then stand to your feet. I present in front of this whole church and really the whole world because the whole world is watching that you are a deacon of Abundant Living Family Church, High Desert, where we have passion for God and compassion for people. You have a communion kit. You'll be called on sometimes to take communion to the sick and to the shut-in. And then we have a little book. We have a Bible. Where's that little book at? Oh, I got you, got you, got you. And so, but I'm going to give you one to all the deacons. That when you can go and minister, because there will be times where you'll be called on, even by family members, to say a word of encouragement to your family when things are happening. It is my honor and our staff's honor and our privilege to anoint you and ordain you as a deacon of Abundant Living Family Church High Desert. Amen. Huh? Oh. Everybody come and lay hands on him. Oh, got it. We want to anoint you today through the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that the anointing on this house is now on you to carry to each end of the earth. And now you are called to be a servant. That means it doesn't matter the hour, it doesn't matter the time. If the kingdom of God needs you, that means you're ready, amen, with a willing heart to serve the people. So we love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give him a hand clap, y'all. Come on. You may be seated. Amen. You could help take your shoes down there. So we had an ordination for Michael, and then I want to do something special. We have a very, very special birthday today. Nikki Archery, where are you? Come on, where's your husband? Kitty, bring her up. Where Kitty at? Come on, bring up. Bring her up. We're so excited today. So where is your family? Come on, come here. Come on, family. Yep, all y'all. Keisha, come on. Don't shake your head at me, girl. Come on. All y'all, come on up. Give them a hand clap. Some of y'all don't know that Nikki has overcome cancer. And so when we talk about a birthday, we are talking about something that is a supernatural event. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. God bless you. Come right on up. So, Nikki, I want to honor you today for 100%, absolutely. And this, don't ever do this again. You only have permission to do this once. Of deceiving your husband. Because y'all not up here for her birthday. You better come over here. Hit my slide. Look at the screen. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Today, we are ordaining Kenneth Archery as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. All the dressing up, all the family, all Nikki's dinner. No, no. It was the only way to take a humble person and get them to come and not fake sick today. Turn around behind you. See that dude? Yes. <laughs> he already knows. He knew. I think him and your mama knew when you came out. Okay? I am so proud of you. Look at me. I trust you. And that's a big thing because I don't trust a lot of people. I trust you with this thing called the gospel. Y'all don't know the story. 
in Texas. Am I right? God called them to come here and help us with this church. Wasn't nobody hardly here. But here's the thing, and I'll never forget this story. They got packed up a U-Haul, didn't hardly have no money. He said every time they pulled in the gas station, there was money in their account. What is going on? When God calls you, he will provide for you. When God calls you and puts a purpose, he will provide for that purpose. You don't know, I've been thinking about that story ever since you guys got here. And ever since y'all been here, you have been faithful. And I can trust y'all. Your kids singing and playing. Your whole family anointed. Your whole family. So today is my honor and my privilege to wash your feet and bring you in to the kingdom of God as a minister at Abundant Living Family Church, High Desert. Dear Heavenly Father, it is my honor and it is my privilege to wash the feet of one of your servants. Father, all three of them kids are anointed. God, everybody knows it. Kevin, Keisha, Kenny. And I think their parents knew that these feet would carry the gospel of Jesus Christ. So now I call your body healed, number one, in the name of Jesus. I call your body healed. I call you, ain't no sickness and disease going to be able to live in your body. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And we anoint you that these feet will carry the gospel until the very end. Until your day is appointed. You will be a, gospel, a minister of the gospel. You will carry the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I thank you as you are a minister of music. As you are a minister of the gospel. That you will now be called Minister Kenny archery father we anoint him and we bless these feet and we thank you God that these feet are sweet father sweet are the feet of the gospel are the feet that carry the gospel of Jesus Christ so father we honor you with the privilege of bringing another minister into this house in Jesus name to carry your word and to carry your gospel in Jesus' name. Your mom and daddy knew. We knew, and his grandma. We knew. Now, the world know. There are people watching all the way in Africa that know now that Kenny Archery is a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Stand to your feet. Hmm. Go to the next slide. Today is an important day in our lives, in your life and Nikki's life. You have surrendered your all to God's call, and you are embarking on a new journey as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is a journey. It is a much higher call than what you have previously known, and you will be, and you will be one, it'll be one filled with many victories and some defeats. Hmm great times and some difficult times, happiness and sadness, time for celebrations as well as moments of grief that they come for you as a couple. Regardless of what this journey entails for you, you are now ready to give your all to complete it. Come on up. And God has anointed you to complete it. So on behalf of Abundant Living Family Church, High Desert, we present you with the certificate of ordination that you are now a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. No one can take it away. This is your minister's handbook. It'll help you do uh, uh, memorial services, weddings, and then here's your communion that you'll be able to take and give communion to those that are sick and those that are shut in. So now, ministers, family, all family, come on. Let's lay our hands on Nikki and Kenny. And you know, when we're ordaining him, we're ordaining you, right, sweetie? Because the Bible says the two become one. And I appreciate your fight 
over cancer in Jesus' name. But y'all did it together. Y'all beat it together. So right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we ordain, Father, both Kenny and Nikki as ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ at Abundant Living Family Church. High Desert, let the anointing on our lives be double on their lives and let them push back the gates of hell so that they never prevail in their family, in their finances, every generational curse broken in the name of Jesus now. New season, open doors in Jesus' name for businesses. Open doors for ministry for singing. Open doors as psalmists. Open doors to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Look at me. God says, you've been trapped in the box of singing, but he's going to put a word in your mouth. So be ready to be called to minister. Be ready to be traveled. Be ready to be called. Don't just pick up a microphone. He's saying, know that on the microphone, you're supposed to sing and you're supposed to speak and bring revelation. He's already been speaking to you and you've already been getting new thoughts and different things in Jesus' name. He said, that ain't for you just to be singing. And that's not just for your personal communion because you didn't know this day was coming. He says, he said, but I I have always known and I have always ordained it. So now be ready to preach in season and out of season. He said you're always ready to sing in season and out of season. You're always ready to worship in season and out of season. He said but I'm going to put you behind a pulpit as well. So you need to be ready and you need to be willing but most importantly you need to be able because he said he has already anointed and called you for such a time as this. He says he sees more in you than you see in yourself. He said, break every mirror that you've been looking at. He said, because what you see is not what he sees. And today, he's calling you out of that and giving you a supernatural confidence. I break the spirit of failure in the name of Jesus out of your mind because there's no way you can be a failure when your daddy is God. There's no way you can be a failure when your father is the creator. There's no way you can be a failure with this family. I know your family, this family around you. But God says, you see yourself too low sometimes. He said, low is to be humble but low has never been assigned to your value so pick your head up saith God and declare the word of the Lord because a brand new season is coming now this is a word he said the many things you have tried to pick up haven't worked so the devil has spoken to you that you're a failure and you're not called and it won't work God says, I'm the God of the, oh, listen to me carefully. I'm the God of the open door, but I'm also the God of the closed door. And here's what the Lord's telling me to tell you. Many things you have grabbed because they were easy and in your gifting. So he shut them down. He shut them down. He said, that's why he did not answer your prayer. He said, but you never let go of your faith. You held it. And the point of the devil was for you to drop it. He said, now, if you'll stay in communion and pick up the things he puts in your hand, you are getting ready to see a new level of opportunity and a new level, a new level of finances. He said, this grip has been broken today and you are getting ready to supernaturally see provision coming from places and people that you wouldn't even have asked. He said, and that'll be a confirmation of the word that he's giving you today. So everything is different. So hold it differently. He said, he sees your heart. He's heard your prayer. Now, things have been transformed. So lift up your head, O ye people, and look toward the hills, because that's where your help is coming from. I love you like my brother, and you know that. You know that. You are dating as a minister of the gospel. And you know the biggest thing? I love how you love her. And I love how you love these kids. Bubba and Kendall are like that because of y'all too. I love your marriage, and I love how you love them. Now, I'm just charging you to love them the same way, which you already do. Y'all, come on, give me a hand clap. Come on, give me a shout. Amen. This concludes our service today.
We are. We love you, and we are honoring you. You want to say something? I just want to say, if you're here for the phenomenal yes. girls meeting, we're going to be over in the children's church, the big sanctuary. Meet me over there. I'll be waiting for you. And what's it for again, real quick? It's for the girls ages seven to twelve years old. If you're interested in hearing more about the program that we're going to be offering. Meet Kendra directly over there. Come on, lift your hands. Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for safe passage. We thank you for Deacon Michael Edgar. We thank you for Minister Kenny Archery. We're so thankful today, Father, for the word you've given us. We will not be deceived by good versus evil, God. And today we will seek revelation over knowledge. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. If you need additional prayer, please come up.